For the first time ever in history, we have a MacBook Air that's larger than 13 inches. This is the new 15 inch MacBook Air. Now, some people might be like, oh, this is just a larger 13 inch MacBook Air, and that's it. But actually, it is way more complicated than that. It has quite a lot of changes from the 13 inch model that you should probably know about. So here are 20 interesting facts about this new 15 inch MacBook Air. Number one, it is actually slightly thicker than the 13 inch model at 1.15 centimeters compared to 1.13, but it is still very, very thin. In fact, Apple claims that it is the thinnest 15 inch laptop on the market. Although it is not the lightest, that would be the LG Gram, where the 15 inch model only weighs 0.9 kilograms as opposed to 1.51 of the air. Number two, let's talk about the base performance. So you actually get more performance out of the 15 inch base model compared to the 13 inch base model. And that's because the base 13 inch comes with the binned M2 chip with an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU, whereas the base 15 inch comes with an unbinned M2 chip with an eight core CPU, but a 10 core GPU. And that 10 core GPU inside the 13 inch at least gave you 23% higher frame rates in gains. Although, keep in mind that uh, this is not sustained performance. The 10 core actually heats up more than uh, the 8 core GPU, and as the air doesn't have a fan, it will throttle heavily over time. But for shorter workloads, the base 15 inch will be faster than the base 13 inch. Number three, there's actually a smaller price difference between a 13 inch and a 15 inch than what you might expect. So the 15 inch starts from $1,300. The 13 inch used to start from $1,200, but now Apple dropped the price to $1,100, which means that there's a $200 price difference between the two models. However, if you bump the 13 inch to the 10 core GPU, just like the 15 inch, the difference would only be $100 now. And those $100 don't just give you a larger display, but they also give you a couple of other extra features. One of those features being a better charger. So with a 13 inch model by default, you get a 30 watt single USB-C power adapter. With a 15 inch by default, you get a 35 watt dual USB-C power adapter. And to get the same one for the 13 inch, you have to pay $20 more, which actually brings the price difference down to just $80. On both models, you can also pick a 70 watt charger. On the 13 inch, you have to pay $20. On the 15 inch, you can simply choose that over the 35 watt dual USB-C charger. Now the 70 watt charger used to be a 67 watt on the 13 inch. So it seems like Apple has just updated the charger. Um, and this charger will give you fast charging, 50% in just 30 minutes. If you use that dual USB-C charger, it will charge at a normal speed, about one hour or so for 50%. Speaking of fast charging, if you are looking for a great fast charger that's not an Apple one, uh, I would honestly suggest this one. This is the Anker 100 watt Nano 2 charger, and it's a three port charger, so you can charge your MacBook Air, your iPhone, and your Apple Watch at the same time with fast charging. There's actually a limited time sale and you can get this charger for $22 off. Uh, so just over $50 in total, which is a steal for what it offers. And yeah, you can just use the link below to grab it. And by doing so, you are also supporting the channel and our work here. So thank you. The next interesting thing about the 15 inch Air is when it comes to the battery life, which is actually a bit disappointing. And the fact that it has the exact same 18 hour battery life for Apple TV movies and 15 hour battery life for web browsing as the 13 inch model. You would expect the 15 inch model to have a larger battery since the laptop itself is also larger. And it actually does. It's got a 66.5 watt hour battery compared to the 52.6 inside the 13 inch model. But of course, because the display is also larger, they've only put the right size battery inside to get the same battery as the 13 inch rather than more, which is a bit disappointing. That being said, Apple usually understates their battery life number. Um, so if you keep the brightness level at a very low amount, I do think that you would actually see slightly better battery life on the 15 inch model compared to the 13 inch. Just don't expect hours extra, maybe 20 to 30 minutes or so. Oh, what's, what's this? My mom's phone is broken and her friend is just texting me asking for money to replace it. I better help. Wrong. Hacker Ren strikes again, this time by impersonating my family through WhatsApp. Hacker Ren's impersonation scam was pressuring me to send funds fast without processing the threat. Our sponsor, NordVPN, can help you spot, covet scams, and keeps you safe. NordVPN features threat protection that stops trackers and harmful ads, plus it scans your files and blacklists harmful websites. This is on top of the usual VPN benefits, such as better access to streaming services and private browsing. 
Go to nordvpn.com slash ZOTVPN and get additional time for free and a massive discount on their two-year plan. Nord also has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can safely give it a go without any risks. The next thing you should know about is when it comes to the SSD speed. So the base model only comes with 256 gigabytes of storage, and uh, with the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 13-inch MacBook Pro, that variant had half the storage speed of the M1 256 gigabyte models. Now, the 15-inch model will likely be affected by the same issue. If you get a 512 gigabyte model, you will not be affected, but you will have to pay $1,500 for that. So in that case, it might be worth just getting the 14-inch model. Well, Talk more about this soon. The next thing you should know about is when it comes to resolution scaling, and this is actually very important. So the 15-inch model has a higher resolution display than the 13-inch. 2880 by 1864 compared to 2560 by 1664 on the 13-inch. Meaning that you can actually set the resolution scaling to be higher and therefore, of course, see more items on the screen. However, the 14-inch MacBook Pro that has a smaller display actually has a higher resolution at 3024 by 1964, meaning that you can actually set the scaling even higher than on the 15 inch Air and see even more items on your display. Which brings us to external displays. The 15 inch Air only supports one external display officially. You can get two or more via AirPlay or Display Link adapters, but you'll be streaming essentially video rather than connecting to a monitor directly. So the quality will be lower and the refresh rates will be limited. If you want more displays natively, you have to get a 14-inch or a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Also, speakers. The 15-inch has better speakers than the 13-inch. We get a six-speaker system with force-canceling woofers, which we don't get with a 13-inch, uh, which only has a four-speaker system. We still do not have any speaker grills, so the sound is likely still coming from underneath the keyboard, uh, meaning that it won't be as good as on the 14-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pros, but it should be a good improvement over the 13-inch. You should also be aware that the Wi-Fi standard is still Wi-Fi 6 as opposed to 6E, like we have on the 14-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pros. Now, some of you might be wondering, how does the 15-inch MacBook Air compare to Apple's last 15-inch laptop, which was, of course, the 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro. This is a laptop that a lot of you probably still have. It was very famous and you know infamous at the same time because of the keyboard. And realistically, this 15-inch MacBook Air is the spiritual successor um, to this design, essentially. It's really thin. Uh, you know, this MacBook didn't have a lot of ports and same applies to the MacBook Air. And this MacBook was focused on being thin and light, which of course the 15-inch Air also focuses on. Whereas the new MacBook Pros are thick, quite heavy, and they focus on performance and offering a lot of ports. Well, compared to the 2019 MacBook Pro, the new Air actually has a slightly smaller display at 15.3 inches compared to 15.4. Also, the Air has a notch, which I'm personally not a fan of. In terms of the weight, the 15-inch MacBook Pro was 1.83 kilograms, and the new Air is significantly lighter at just 1.51, so that's a big difference. When it comes to the thickness, the 15-inch Pro was 1.55 centimeters thick compared to just 1.15 on the Air, so again, another big difference. And in terms of the footprint, the 15-inch MacBook Pro was a bit wider by 0.9 centimeters and deeper by 0.3, so the footprint is actually quite similar. But of course, when it comes to the performance, that 8-core M2 chip is twice as powerful single-core and multi-core-wise compared to the Intel i9 8-core chip inside the 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro, and the GPU performance is also double. Considering that the Air is fanless, that is really, really impressive. And yeah, performance-wise, of course, you're gonna get significantly better performance if you're upgrading from one of these machines. I guess the only downgrade would be uh, the two Thunderbolt ports, which we are losing on the right-hand side. So what about against the 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro, as they both cost $1,300, and they both come with the unbin version of the M2 chip with a 10-core GPU? Well, there are only three reasons that you might want to get the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and those are one, the touch bar, if you really love it, two, active cooling that can sustain longer exports and gaming, although you can achieve the same from the 15-inch MacBook Air if you just get a cooling pad, and three, it is more portable. The 13-inch Pro is lighter at 1.4 kilograms compared to 1.51 on the MacBook Air, and the footprint is also much smaller. But for most people, I would honestly just recommend getting the 15-inch MacBook Air. You get a larger display, you get better speakers, and if you really need that performance, don't get a 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro, get a 14-inch M1 Pro instead, refurbished. Which brings us to how does the 14-inch MacBook Pro compare to the 15-inch Air? Well, size-wise, the 15-inch Air is, of course, larger. It is wider by 3 centimeters and longer by about 1.5. 
but it is also lighter at 1.51 kilograms compared to 1.6, and also thinner at 1.15 centimeters compared to 1.55. So it is more portable than the 14 inch, but at the same time, it does take up more space on a desk. Of course, you do get a larger display, 15.3 inches compared to 14.2, but the 14 inches display is also 120 Hz promotion and also mini LED, which is much better for viewing content. And keep in mind that resolution scaling that I mentioned before, the 14 inch will actually be able to display more content on top of being able to connect to multiple external displays. The 14 inch also has better speakers and stay tuned for a hands-on comparison. We'll be doing one next week. So do subscribe and stay tuned for that. And on top of that, you also get more ports with a 14 inch. You get one extra Thunderbolt port, you get an HDMI port, an SD card reader, and much, much better performance. I mean, even the base M1 Pro 14 inch was more than three times faster at exporting a video project than the base 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro. And you can get a refurbished 14 inch M1 Pro for $1,539 directly from Apple. Basically brand new, you get a new outer shell and a new battery. So it is definitely worth it over the 15 inch Air if you don't need a thinner and lighter laptop. Which brings us to the M3 version. So Mark Gurman has stated that the M3 chip would be launching in late 2023. Although some more recent reports have stated that it has been delayed to 2024 instead. So if the M3 chip does actually come this year, that would likely be in October, which is just four months away. And this chip will also be based on a smaller three nanometer manufacturing process, which would make it more power efficient, meaning that the new MacBook Airs with the M3 chip would likely have improved battery lives. So personally, I would wait for the M3 chip, or at least I would wait a bit longer, closer to October, so that we see if you know they do release a new MacBook and a new chip then. Otherwise, you might regret your purchase just four months from now. So who is this 50-inch MacBook Air for? Well, it is for people who want a super portable 50-inch laptop with amazing performance and great battery life. The 14-inch MacBook Pro is a better deal if you don't mind the thicker body and extra weight, and the LG Gram is a great choice for people who want an even lighter computer that is only slightly thicker than the Air. I think the 15-inch Air would become an outstanding deal once the M3 version gets released and the M2 model uh, gets a discount, or you can just wait a bit longer until you can buy it from the Apple refurbished store. That would be, well, essentially the best deal for a 15-inch laptop. Do subscribe for a hands-on look at the 15-inch Air next week when we get it in the studio. I'm Daniel, this is Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.